Welcome back for the final update of Half-Life 2, Episode 1. This is going to be covering a uh, part of Urban Flight, and then the remainder will be the final chapter known as Exit 17. Yeah, we're finally getting out of here. Fantastic. This is a, you know, a variation of the seesaw puzzle. Kind of similar to the solution that we got before. In this case, you know, if you don't do the, the seesaw correctly, you're going to be plunging straight into electrocuted water. So, you know, no pressure. But that's just about got it. Yeah, funny how you can hold up an entire man with just one hollow barrel. I'm not going to worry about the physics of it. Now this head crab. This particular head crab has earned my ire. See, in every single test recording, it would do a nicely choreographed leap right at me into the barnacle's waiting tongue. However... When I tried to coax it to do the exact same thing in the recording, well, it, um, it wasn't cooperating. So, yeah, not a fan of this particular poison head crab. It can just get a face full of buckshot. Oh yes. The electricity stacks up very quickly. Hey there, Alex. Sorry about leaving you alone down there, Gordon. I got a bit swamped. I see you did all right without me. Yeah, sort of implying there's been all sorts of off-screen fighting. This whole hospital sequence is definitely the highlight of this particular episode. Which, uh, I'm afraid to say, definitely implies that it, everything from here is sort of going to go downhill. I hate to, you know, throw a damper on things, but... Unfortunately, um... After the uh, high-intensity, like, mixed enemy shootout there... They're not going to be able to match that same kind of energy for the remaining uh, 30 seconds of this update. On the plus side, you know, we do get to have a little bit of it. more zombie fun. I don't know precisely what, what the entertainment value is in burning zombies. I guess the idea is that... You know, zombies are unsophisticated enemies, so giving you the option to mess around with them in creative ways is sort of a way of spicing it up, so to speak. Here they come. They're through the door. So they are, yes. Yeah, this whole, like, holdout bit here. Not much to say about it, just, you know, shotgun and zombos. I was really hoping that Alex would do one of her, um, contextual things there. Like, she has an ability to occasionally take out a zombie by swinging the butt of her shotgun at him. Didn't do it, though. What a shame. What kind of hospital is this? You know, honestly, I kind of wonder if, um, 
Like, you remember, like, I was saying maybe several updates ago that there was a plan for a an Adrian Shepard um, expansion where he and Dr. Grigori were fighting together in a hospital. I kind of wonder if some of the concepts for that work their way into this particular, like, zombie hospital. Hard to say. I'd have to look at the sort of timeline of how these things were being put together and see if maybe, you know, the chicken or the egg came first. This hallway here. Uh, yeah. There are turrets at the end. Sort of a cubbyhole run. While you're being bothered by zombies. It's different. Definitely different. But I can't say if I particularly enjoy it, per se. Mostly it's it's cramped. There are, you know, not a lot of options here. And the whole thing kind of... How do I put this? It's like, um... They had one idea for a big ol' action sequence, and everything afterwards feels like a real... letdown, almost. Like, they could've cut all this stuff out and just let the action set piece be the final part of the chapter. At any rate, the train station. First, as a matter of great urgency. Oh boy. Better find Barney and get moving. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. See, he's right there. I wondered if you were gonna make it in time. Sorry to keep you waiting. The Combine's on our tail. What's the plan? I'm sending folks out in groups. And like I said before, if you can keep them safe and provide cover, we might actually stand a chance of reaching the escape trains. Sounds good. Send out the first group. Here we go. Now, uh, this sequence here, the train station... Well, Gordon Freeman, about time... I have some gripes. Specifically, um, this whole segment here where we're escorting folks... Yeah, um... It lasts three whole rooms. You got the outside portion... You got this, like, train depot. And... Yeah, that, that, that's it. Wonderful escort sequence, eh? Yeah, they should have. That would have made for a much more interesting idea. Like if you had a constant stream of civilians going through. Go back and get another group. I'll stay here and guard the gate. And you had to be fighting like constant waves of baddies while the civilians were filtering through. Like that would have been an interesting idea. Sort of like um, I don't know if you played um, Oddworld Soulstorm. Uh, I don't know if you're even familiar with the Oddworld games, but there are these bits that they added on where you have a bunch of, of, of helpless dudes like climbing up a wall in order to get the freedom and, and folks are firing on them. And so the idea is you have to take care of the folks who are firing at them so that en enough people can get through. And if you're particularly good, you can end up saving everybody. But that's kind of more what I was envisioning. As it is, uh, we're going to be seeing a crowd of maybe 20 civilians at most for this whole sequence. Oh yes, like we're going to be doing this over and over and over again. That would constitute my other gripe about this. 
The next group is ready for you. Oh, also, we got the Magnum at some point, but... Uh, honestly, um... I don't know... what it is about the revolver in this game, but... Uh, I really can't draw a good bead with the crosshair that they give you. Wow. You know, I, I got really keyed up about the sycophantic everybody follow Freeman stuff in the previous game, but I don't know if this whining is a good substitute. Like, wasn't the whole concept of this expansion in order to make follower characters who weren't a pain in the ass? Like, these civilians are going to bother you about everything as they're accompanying you, and honestly, I don't like that. Anyway, that was wave two. I'd like this idea in theory, like, uh, you know, the idea of an evolving situation. You're presented with a problem and then have to repeat it in multiple iterations where complications keep arising in order to raise the tension. Where the issue is, is the pacing. Like, that's my primary problem. Oh, also, there's a sniper now. Blood lost. And, uh, yeah, it hurts. Fortunately, though, I happen to have a solution. Nice. I also don't know um, why they keep on throwing enemies at you in the sort of setup portion where there aren't any civilians to, to add pressure and you can just take the bad guys out at your leisure. Fantastic ass kicking, Doc. I don't know. Like, maybe they could have thought this through a little bit more. Dr. Freeman. Yep. And here's the other thing, the other problem I'm having with it, is that um, if you know what you're doing, you can take the baddies down at a very reasonable distance. Like, uh, aside from this bit here, where you're being forced to run across the upper portion, and shotgun guys could theoretically come through the windows at any time, You're not really in a situation where you're being immediately pressed on. You can sort of, if you're being slow and patient, just take down all the obstacles and have a clear way forward. And you might have noticed there, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with this chapter, but sometimes I feel like Alex... Her triggers fire off twice for various bits of dialogue. Like, you're gonna be seeing it again before the end of this update. It's, uh, bizarre. You know, it's a sort of denouement to the Fighting Through City 17. A way to sort of cap off the fun times we had. I guess it is nice that they're just throwing a grab bag of all the different problems you have to face. Sort of like one last hurrah.
could make you a little bit nostalgic if, you know, you care about stuff like that. Like man hacks. Well, like before this chapter, when was the last time we saw man hacks? That brings me back. Now that's the Gordon Freeman I know. Well, actually, the answer is I think we saw man hacks back in the reactor, so that's not exactly the the best example. But yeah, the APC rocket vans. That was that's more of a nostalgic thing. That was like water hazard where we saw that. Not counting the scripted moment in the previous chapter, where an antlion guard smashed a uh, an APC to mush. That doesn't count. Yeah, you you might notice that I'm being a little bit careful here because, as I said, shotgunners can just kind of appear in the windows drop down and unload a double dose of buckshot into the guys you're escorting. That can be immediately fatal. <laughs> I thought we'd never make it. So, so how many loops are we on now? Uh is this the fourth or the fifth? Either way. Uh, it's not exactly getting any more exciting. In fact, I was actually partly tempted to just cut this whole thing out. But I kind of feel like you wouldn't be getting the full experience that way. Oh, but this is exciting. Yeah, we got Metro Cops. Why they decided to throw the Metro Cops as the last obstacle, I do not know. Hmm. And my aim with these things is kind of uh, questionable. I think the problem is that, like, the crosshair, like, the actual thing you're aiming with, is kind of really indistinctive. To the trains, people! We'll make sure you get there safe and sound. Now, for some reason, there is an achievement for getting folks through without taking a single loss, but it, I didn't get it. Reasons unknown. Eh, I'm not too bothered about it. Um, achievements were kind of a, a cool new thing when they first came out on Steam, but I feel after achievements being so ubiquitous ac across games, I sort of lost their luster a wee bit. And there's one of those examples I was talking about. Fortunately, it happened right at the latter end, so no big deal. Thanks, Freeman. Took me a little bit to remember that, oh yeah, everybody just runs off and leaves you. Combine will surely leave everyone alone because we are slightly to the left. Bye, Barney. Good luck. See you when I see ya. Well, 
Well, yeah, it's just us again. That was a fun little diversion, I guess. didn't think it would be that easy, did you? Yep. First shot takes out the crank. Next shot gives us a way to escape. This whole Strider chase is actually pre-scripted, more or less. What it amounts to is you have to get up to a particular trigger where it'll actually be well it's vulnerable before you reach there but even if you take it down just another strider will just get spawned in that was weird Also, this Strider has a couple of really dirty tricks. For one thing, uh, as the chase goes on, it starts to fire a lot faster. Like, okay, that, like this is its usual auto cannon, but then it starts to almost like rapid fire it. You'll see. actually uh, target the Strider with these mines and also hurt them with, with rifle grenades. I try to do it myself with uh, mixed results. And by mixed I mean... Uh, And that's where the um, the checkpoint leaves you um, before this whole like scaffolding sequence. Conceptually, I kind of like the Strider chase, but it, the problem I think is that um, I'm just not very good at it. I feel like this is more on me than on the folks who designed the scenario. Like this pit here. I mean, it certainly is frustrating if you happen to be really bad, but... Uh, I mean, that sort of describes a lot of things. If you're bad at things, they'll feel worse. Sort of an unstable equilibrium there. If you're down, you are really down. Yeah, that container oof, shifting slightly towards you every time is sort of indicated that you have to keep moving. Coming on the final stretch here, though. Soon. Yep. Be coming across one of those good old fashioned rocket crates. Just like Mommy used to make them. And yeah, you, you see, like, how crazy it's going now. I don't feel like there would be a conceivable way to do a no damage run of this. Like, it's just firing way too fast and you have to expose yourself as you're moving along. And you can even fire through little cracks there. 
just for, you know, extra fun. But oh well. Problem solved. And... It's quiet again. Laying it on a little thick, aren't you? I don't believe it. I think we're actually gonna make it out of here. Quick now, let's get the train moving. Jump on, Gordon. I'm right behind you. I want to emphasize, uh, yeah, Alex was just sort of waiting in here, I guess. Like, couldn't she have, I don't know, found a way to toss us some rockets or something? Here we go. We did it, Gordon. Regardless, yeah. It's time to say goodbye to City 17. It's kind of an interesting situation where, you know, we don't actually save the city at all. I feel like there's kind of a parallel there with, you know, how Black Mesa it sort of also was beyond saving, and all we could do was just, oh God, the transmission's going out. you know, do what we could to save as many people as possible. Yeah, no offense, but uh, I don't precisely know what even Gordon Freeman could have done against that. Hmm. Actually, like when the game first came out, a trailer for the next episode. But, uh, I think I'm gonna leave that for when we start on episode two because, well, it's kind of funny actually. There are some spoilers, but also, <laughs> there are some things that show up in the trailer that don't happen in episode two. And I think that'd be funny to show that off when the time comes. In the meantime, though, uh, final impressions. Um, episode 1 had some real highlights, but also, I don't know, a lot of it didn't necessarily jive with me. It felt like um, the puzzles and everything, it wasn't my cup of tea. Regardless, I'll see you folks next time.